So here's how common events work. It's it's very simple. Just click on one of these places right here. I don't know number one. Give it a name. My common event like that. Set the trigger to none. We're gonna keep it at none for this time. And then just go into the contents and do a thing like this is a thing. Yeah, there we go. There's our common event. Now let's learn what we can do with this common event. One thing we can do is actually call this common event from within another event. So for example, let's go here and let's actually create a new event. So we'll take this person, copy paste them. Let's give them a new image such as people to, we'll take away all this weird stuff. And instead we'll call a common event. So all you have to do is go into tab one and go down to common event, select your common event and boom, that's all that happens. Now this common event is gonna be played when this event runs. And when we go talk to the event, this is a thing. There we go, the common event is playing. And that's really all there is to it. And you're thinking, well, what's the point of this? This seems pretty useless. All you're doing is just calling another event from somewhere else. And the reason you want to do this for certain things is for repetitiveness. To have an easy access point to manipulate a large amount of events that repeat, like times and stuff. So here's an example. Say for example, every time the player obtains an item, you want a certain sound effect to play, like a, like a good sound effect, like a ding, like a chime or something. But let's say, I don't know, you want to change that chime. Well, the thing is that if you play the sound effect every time you get the item, you're going to have to go back throughout your entire game and look for every moment where you can obtain an item and change that sound effect. Or you can call a common event whenever you obtain the item and that common event plays a sound effect. Then whenever you want to change the sound effect or add other features to when you get an item, all you gotta do is change the common event itself and you're pretty much good to go. And that's one of the most basic things you can do with common events. Just simply have one basic function that you repeat multiple times so you can have an easy accessible point for you to manipulate this single function. However, common events actually have secondary functions and that's to be called from skills and items. So for example, let's go to one of the item rights here. Let's go to our super potion. And let's set it so in the effects, we'll go to other tab, common event, and call our common event right here. And this means whenever this potion is used, our super potion, it's going to call our common event. So now I've set it so this NPC gives us our super potion. So got the super potion. Now when we go to our items, use our super potion. We're going to use it on T. Now the common event will actually be played saying this is a thing. So let's actually get another super potion. Let's go run around over here, go into town maybe. Go wherever we want to go. Oh, there's a cutscene playing. Yeah, whatever. Cool, cool stuff. Good item, item, item. Use it on T again. And once again, the common event is going to play. So this can be used in a lot of different creative ways. So let's say, for example, we have Lucius right here, which is actually not a member of our party yet. Let's actually make an item that adds Lucius to our party. So to do so, let's go to our common event and actually just do change party member, Lucius, add, and initialize. And this will make it so when we use the item, it'll add Lucius to our party. Let's also rename the item to summon Lucius. I have no idea if I spelled that correctly. We'll set the damage to none since we're not going to be doing any damage, just summoning him. And we'll set this icon to be something like this right here, the potatoes, because Lucius is a potato. And let's also set the scope to none so it just automatically plays. And now with our brand new summon Lucius item, we'll use it and boom, Lucius is now in our party because we <laughs> use the item and there he is. And of course, since the item is consumable, that means we can only use it once, which means we can't get like infinite Luciuses added to our party and stuff like that. Though that shouldn't be a problem anyway. Now let's actually try making an item that allows you to change your name when you use it. So now let's go to tab three, go to name input processing. We'll set it so actor T has a maximum of eight characters that can be input for the name. So we'll do that. Then that's pretty much all that we have to do. Just go to items, we'll set this so change name of player. And that's all you gotta do. And now once again, if we go into our items, go to our change name of player item thingy, it'll call the common event, which will allow us to change the name of T. So we'll just call her A. Hit OK and boom. Now our new name is A. All because we called that common event with our new item. So as you can see, while there is a limited amount of stuff you can do with items, if you combine it with common events, you have pretty much limitless amount of powers you can use and stuff. And that's really all for this tutorial. But don't worry, we have much more to do with common events, such as these fun triggers right here. I can hardly wait to get into those. So yeah, that's all for now. Until next time, RPG Maker Tutorial end.